Right now, the day's biggest news stories from the biggest perspective. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. One, two, three. Oh yeah, what's up Vegas? It is Monday. So glad you could join us. Yeah, there's a lot of news going on in the world. If you hadn't uh, already noticed, we're going to cover it all. I promise you it is Sharp and Shapiro and it is Vegas take time. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Boy, do we have a lot to go over today. Oh, yeah. A couple people in Trump's administration making themselves look like buffoons on the air on national television. We're going to play that for you here in just a little bit. Donald Trump going after the whistleblower. And now the whistleblower's attorneys are in fear for his safety. I mean, it's just you can't make this stuff up. It's just getting weirder and weirder. We talked a little bit about this trial last week. This is the Dallas cop who off-duty finishes her shift, walks into an apartment that she thought was hers, kills an innocent man. Well, that trial is going on now. We're going to have a legal analyst and uh, Bremer join us. She's been all over the networks talking about this case. She does a fantastic job. I hate to call it fascinating. Because we have an innocent man that lost his life. But the, but the case itself is so weird, it is fascinating to hear the, the, the legal ramifications and the specifics. So she'll be joining us in hour number two to talk about that. What better day than to have Mr. X, the Hollywood conservative, come on our show? He's going to join us in hour number three. Did you hear what Robert De Niro said about Trump yesterday on CNN? We'll talk a little bit about that. And there are, uh, you know, Alec Baldwin going back to Donald Trump on SNL it was hilarious. We'll talk to Mr. X, the Hollywood conservative. What do you think about everything that's going on? And will UNLV's football coach, Tony Sanchez, even make it through the year without being fired? I think at this point, it's absolutely evident that he is going to lose his job. So coming up in hour number three, we'll be talking with uh, Bernie Fratto, nationally syndicated uh, talk show host at Fox Sports, covers UNLV. Will the UNLV football coach make it through the year? And we'll get to that coming up in hour number three. Plenty of ticket giveaways including a, a one-night stay at the Plaza Hotel and a $100 gift certificate to the Steakhouse. We'll be giving that away today. So stay tuned for all that stuff. All right, as I said, we're loaded. we got a lot to get to today. And if you were watching the news over the weekend of, you know, kind of figuring out what was going on, there were a couple interviews that certainly strike my mind as, well, I guess you could say interesting. Stephen Miller did an interview on Fox News, made himself look like a complete buffoon. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but Jake Tapper, who who I think does a pretty good job on CNN, if you think he's too uh, too much of a lefty, I actually think he's quite fair. So Jake Tapper on CNN over the weekend is interviewing Congressman Jim Jordan. Now, I've said this about Jim Jordan. He's the representative of Ohio's 4th Congressional District. They clashed on TV, and I'll tell you right now, Tapper made him look like a moron. I've said this about Jordan before. I'll say it again. He is a right-wing hack. He cares more about his interests and pushing his own agenda than what's right for the United States of America. And this shows that there are people like Jim Jordan in Congress who have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. Either they don't want to hear the facts or they don't know what the facts are. And Jordan is a perfect example of this. So I want to play this uh, this exchange with you between Jake, Jake Tapper and Jim Jordan in regards specifically to this Ukraine investigation and this possible impeachment of Donald Trump. Here it is. The the vice president's son gets paid $50,000 a month and gets hired by a company in 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 an industry he has no experience in, and, oh, that's fine, and all you folks in the press and Democrats, oh, no problem here. Go go try telling that, taking that message to the American people. If you want to propose a law, if you don't make $50,000 in a year, and when they see the vice president's son getting paid $50,000 a month in a field, in an industry he has no experience in, I I kind of wonder what what Hunter Biden did in those board meetings. So he just look at his phone, check out the sports board. In May, the Ukrainian... But he's getting paid $50,000, and then when the company that's paying him that money mm-hmm. is under investigation, guess what? Daddy comes running to the rescue. The vice president of the United States that's comes running That's not what says, happened. Fire, sir, fire that prosecutor. Sir, that's not what happened. The European Union, the Obama administration, Wait, Joe- the International Monetary Fund, pro uh, uh, clean government activists in Ukraine thought that the prosecutor so you're saying was that, not prosecuting corruption. So you're saying Joe Biden didn't tell, the, didn't tell Ukraine to fire that prosecutor? He, I think he did. He did. No, but the guy he, he was, bragged about it. The guy was not prosecuting anything. And, that and, was and the, the prosecu- problem. And, the and government the, of the United States and, here are the, and facts. the West. Joe Biden told him to fire the prosecutor. You're not saying facts. You say, here are the facts. These no, here are the facts. Joe, did Joe Biden tell him to fire the prosecutor? Because yes. he wasn't going after corruption. He wasn't going after corruption. 
I mean, that is just such a ridiculous exchange. It shows you what a buffoon Jim Jordan is. So let's try to break this down if we can. Yes, Joe Biden's son was receiving $50,000 a month. Does it help? And is it a good reason why he got that money is because his father is was the vice president? Absolutely. That's not breaking the law. You could say you could apply the same thing to Donald Trump. His daughter is making more money than she's ever made, and she's doing business throughout the world. And her her business has quadrupled in profits since Donald Trump took office over two years ago. Same thing with Donald Trump's sons. I like to call them Uday and Kuse. What is it? Eric and Don Jr. They're making more money with the Trump organization as well. It's not against the law. It's the same premise. The bottom line is Biden's son did not break the law. Joe Biden did not break the law. And all Jordan is doing is giving out right-wing talking points. The $50,000 a month deal didn't break the law. The law was not broken. Then he talks about, well, Joe Biden wanted to fire the prosecutor. The prosecutor was not prosecuting the case. The reason why Joe Biden wanted him fired, quite simply, and Jake Tapper explained it, is because the guy wasn't doing a good job in fighting corruption. Do you know how ridiculous this is? The Republicans are trying to say, well, he he wanted the prosecutor fired because, you know, he's trying to protect his son. He, He wanted the investigation to be over with. First of all, the investigation was over with, number one. Number two, the prosecutor was not doing his job in prosecuting corruption cases. But Jordan wants to mislead you into believing that Biden wanted this prosecutor fired to protect his son, which is completely not true. And by the way, you want to talk about somebody who has had, you know, sexual complaints. Remember, remember that those sexual, uh, you know, things that were that were brought up in regards to Jim Jordan, sexual misconduct. If you want to talk about somebody that has been involved in scandals, Jim Jordan knows a thing or two about that. But he goes on CNN with these right-wing talking points. And look, at least if the talking points were right, I would say, well, all right, at least he's telling the truth. But he's not. Jim Jordan is lying. He lied on national television, making himself look like a complete clown that he is, that many of us already knew he was, a partisan hack. Yes, are there partisan hacks on the left? Absolutely. But Jim Jordan is no exception. He is a right-wing partisan hack, period. And then Stephen Miller. You want to talk about a guy who... In, in his position, should not be there. Who has zero qualifications to be in the spot that he is in. It is Stephen Miller. Uh, you can make the same thing about Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. Yeah, there's a lot of people in Trump's administration that shouldn't be there. But Stephen Miller is at the top of that list. There's no question about it. Stephen Miller went on with Chris Wallace on Fox News. Now, if you recall, if you've been listening to me, I say, you know, Chris Wallace is one of those guys that I really, truly respect. Fox News leans way to the right, just like CNN leans to the left. But I really do respect Chris Wallace because I think he attacks both sides. He asks the difficult questions, and I think Wallace is the best guy they got over there at Fox News. He's the most credible person they have. He does a fantastic job. I've always said that about Wallace, and there's a couple other people at Fox News that I like. I think Wallace is right up there on top. So he has Stephen Miller come in, and Stephen Miller is dodging questions. There's certain questions that he refuses to answer, and this is a very, very important question in regards to why Donald Trump used private lawyers to get information on Biden. This is the exchange between Stephen Miller and Wallace that I'm talking about. But I've asked you a specific question. I'd like a specific answer. The president has the State Department. He's got the CIA. He's got the Pentagon. He's got a number of other agencies. Why did he use three private lawyers to get information on Biden from the uh, pr- from the Ukrainian government rather than go through all of the agencies of his government? Two different points. Number one. Uh, how about John, answering my question? John Durham, as you know. I, I, wait a minute. John Durham is investigating something completely there, different. There, there, I, no, there's, Stephen, there's, I'm there's, asking you a direct question. Why did the president use private attorneys rather than go to the State Department? If you don't know, that's an acceptable see, answer. But let's not talk about John Durham, I who's investigating the Trump investigation. There's two issues that were brought up I'm on the I'm not asking phone call. two issues. Why did the, he do it? Chris, I understand. I understand that you have your question. I have my answer. There's two issues that were brought up on the it, phone call. You have your non-answer you, at this point. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was. It was a non-answer. Wallace did a fantastic job there, pushed him. John Durham has absolutely nothing to do with the question that Wallace asked. And again, Stephen Miller making himself look like a complete clown, completely unqualified, number one. 
He sounds worse than Kellyanne Conway. I thought that wasn't even possible. Miller is 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 just he's just the worst. And it's a very fair question if you didn't if you didn't really hear what he said there. Donald Trump used private lawyers to get information on Biden. And by the way, we're learning more information that Rudy Giuliani, speaking of lawyers, Trump's personal attorney, was not working alone in this Biden Ukraine probe. That's right, Chris Wallace added on his show. Again, this is Fox News on Wallace's show, that in addition to Giuliani, lawyers Joe DiGenova and his wife Victoria working alongside the former New York City mayor. According to a top U.S. official, the three attorneys were working off the books, quote, not within the Trump administration. Only the president knows the details of their work. Now, why would he do that? Somebody please explain that to me. Why would Donald Trump have his own personal attorneys looking into this Ukraine matter and the Bidens? Nothing on the books, and the only person that knows the details of the work is the president himself and these three attorneys in DiGenova, his wife, and Rudy Giuliani. Now, why is that? Think about that for a second. I don't care if you're a Trump supporter. I don't care if you're way on the right or on the left. What is the reason why Donald Trump would use personal attorneys and keep everything off the books? If he cares about corruption and he, and he really cares about this issue and he wants people to find out about what's going on, why would he keep it under wraps? Why would he keep it off the books? Why? The simple answer is because he doesn't want people to know what he's doing. That's why. And Donald Trump has gone nuts on social media over the last 48 hours, even by his standards. He has absolutely lost his mind. He has absolutely gone crazy. He wants to meet the whistleblower. Trump suggesting that Schiff be arrested for treason, for exaggerating with the Ukraine. He's going after Schiff. It's unbelievable. We'll take your phone calls on this. What do you what do you make of all this? 702-257-5396. Again, that number to call 702-257-5396. Let's start with uh Steven. Steven, thanks for calling the Vegas take. What's on your mind, my man? Yeah, good morning, Mr. Brian. Yes, sir. I was hoping to add a little perspective. I, I listened to Brian Kilmeade on a regular basis. In fact, I can't remember the last time I missed this show. He played that clip from uh, from Biden probably three times a week, and I'm wondering why you don't play it. Rather than you telling us what who's right and who's wrong. I'm not I'd telling you who's right and who's wrong. Uh, let me give you what? some facts, Stephen, so you can listen. Here's the reason no, why I don't. I don't need any facts. Okay, well, what, okay, I want well, you to play Biden's okay, well, guess what? Statement. First of all, it's not your show, and I don't. wrong about I, I, what he did. Are you going to let me respond? First of all, it's not Brian your. Is Brian are you going to let me respond, or are you going to talk over me? Go ahead. Which, Go thank, ahead. thank you. It's very kind of you. First of all, it's not your show, and I don't play what you tell me to play. That's number one. Number two, Biden was talking about firing the prosecutor. Do you know why? Do you have any idea why he wanted to of fire the prosecutor? They were investigating their son. Wrong, wrong. See, you listen to Fox News talking points and you don't no, know the facts. Why don't you be quiet and let me? Why don't you be quiet? Why don't you be quiet? Why don't you be quiet? You hack and let me and let me uh, educate you. Okay, otherwise I'm going to pod you down. Do not interrupt because me. Do not interrupt me. Pot him down. Pot him down. Pot him down because he won't shut up. Let me educate you, Stephen. Okay. The prosecutor was not prosecuting this case at the time Biden made that statement. Because you're an idiot and you don't understand what you are talking about, I will help you out, okay? Not only was the prosecutor not prosecuting this case at the time Biden made that comment, but the reason why Biden and many others, by the way, including people in the Ukraine, wanted this prosecutor fired because he wasn't doing enough to prosecute corruption in general. Does that not make any sense to you? Do you not understand what I'm talking about? Let's see if you could show just a little bit of intellectual honesty, Stephen. Do you understand what I just said? Does that make any sense to you at all? Yeah, it's a plausible denial. It's not a plausible denial. It's called facts. So no, I'm going to ask you again. You he was not prosecuting the case. What part of that Brian. do you not understand? Don't Brian well, me. He was like not this. prosecuting the, the case. In front of you? He was you not. Pro- the file in front of you. The file. What the hell are you talking about? This is a fact. The file. Why don't Somebody you file? Why don't you file your way off my show, you hack? You file your way off my show. Mind. Goodbye. Goodbye, you hack. You're no better than Jordan, you hack. Two five seven five three nine six. I try to give you facts. Those are facts. I don't need to play audio. That is a fact. When Joe Biden made the comment that he wanted the prosecutor fired, the prosecutor was not prosecuting the case. The investigation wasn't even open into Hunter Biden. So not only does Stephen not understand that, but even if it was true, even if Joe Biden tried to interfere in some sort of investigation, which, by the way, he didn't, even if he did, it wouldn't make what Donald Trump did right. 
What part of that do you not understand, you right-wing buffoon? 257-5396 is the number to call. Uh, why don't we go to Pete? Pete, thanks for calling in. What's on your mind? Hello? Yeah, uh, is this Pete? No, this is uh, Deplorable Gary. How, how are you? It's Gary. Gary, what's going on? Two things. Um, what do you call it? Uh, Mayor Giuliani. I don't know why he's on his team. I mean, he's loyal to uh, President Trump, but... I don't think he's doing you know, him any favors, Gary. Well, he dressed up at, as, as a drag queen on Saturday Night Live twice. Shouldn't, <laughs> he, shouldn't he be reading stories to uh, children in the, uh, the school... Uh, we call library uh, instead. I'll, uh, I'll tell you what, if Rudy oh. Giuliani was reading to children in drag, I would definitely go and watch that because that would be very oh. entertaining. One more point. One more point. Yes. You you need a radio cop on your <laughs> show before you turn into Mr. Tomato Head with these people. You hear a little siren in the background and a police motorcycle guy, he pulls up to you and he gives you a citation for going overboard, being aggressive and all right, well, I'll take changing, changing Gary, if, <laughs> Gary, if we ever need a radio cop, I will certainly hire you, my friend, because I like you, Gary. 257-5396 is the number to call. Why don't we go to Pete now? Pete, thanks for calling into the Vegas Take. What's on your mind? Yeah, I just want to say our representatives are due back in D.C. soon, and I, I, if they're listening, just please stay home. Uh, little children were gunned down in cold blood because our representatives... Yeah, you're right. ...failed to do their job, and... Uh, you're right. I agree. And they're more interested in destroying Trump rather than saving the lives of innocent little children. Well, I, I would blame both sides, Pete. I'm sure you would agree with that. I would also blame Republicans. I think they're just as at fault for, for allowing these mass shootings to happen and doing nothing about it. I'm sure you would agree with that, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't disagree with you, but I'm sure you would agree with me on this one. While you're right, I think the top of our list should be gun control, stopping these mass shootings from happening. Uh, it's also important that the president conduct himself in a lawful manner. I'm sure you would agree with that. Well, we love Trump no matter what, but... Uh, what do you mean you love Trump no matter what, even if he breaks the law? Even if he breaks the law, sure. Okay, so let me ask you this then. When Donald Trump met with uh, the head of the NRA after he talked tough about, you know, after these mass shootings about how he wanted background checks and he wanted red flag laws, he met with the head of the NRA several times and then all of a sudden he changed his tune. Do you still love him for that? I'm familiar with that. and All, all I can say is um, uh, the... Um, you know, I'm, it's all right. Just, Take a deep uh, breath. He's Take gonna have breath. to. He's gonna get straightened out there. Uh, and um, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, or, Pete. Or he's gonna lose a lot of conservatives yeah. like myself who yeah. will not vote for him again if he does not do something about this violence. Yeah. Uh, well, Pete, I'm glad to hear you say that, my friend. And I, I, I speak to people like you every day. And I'm gonna tell you something, Pete. If he does lose the election, if he makes it to the election, I'm not sure if he does. But if he does, and if he does lose. It's going to be because of people like you, Pete. It's been going to be because of conservatives like you and people in the middle that do not vote for him. I don't know who he's going to be running against, but I'm, I, I told you right now, I don't think, I personally do not think he is going to make it to the 2020 election. Let's go to Brady, 257-5396. Brady, what's going on? Yeah, good morning, gentlemen. I wanted to bring up the point you said, uh, why did Mr. Trump go out? Uh, didn't use, why did he use his own lawyers instead of using different lawyers like the government lawyers? And there's a pretty simple answer. The FBI and the CIA has been corrupting against Trump for the last two and a half years, a deep state. Why would Where's Trump your proof even, of that? Where's your proof of that? Do you remember the Mueller report and all that that did nothing? The collusion, which was nothing? Uh, that was an investigation. The, in, by the way, you, your, your definition of nothing is very different from my definition and many others out there. That wasn't nothing. There were at least 10 instances, not of collusion, but obstruction. So your definition of nothing, your word of nothing okay, is very okay, different than mine. Well, you brought it up. If you don't, what do you mean you don't want to hear about it? What do you mean you don't want to hear about it? What do you mean you don't want to hear about it? You just brought it up, my friend, and I asked you for facts, and you can't give me facts. Here's another fact. That wasn't Ivanka a fact. Trump that wasn't a Hunter fact. Biden. You compared Hunter Biden to Ivanka Trump, a true business leader? You got the what? crackhead Biden? Wait, hold on a second. Wait, Ivanka? hold on a second. You just called Come Ivanka on. You just called Ivanka a true business leader, and obviously you're not intelligent enough to understand my comparison. So let me explain it to you, Brady, okay? We're talking about that Jordan talked about $50,000 a month that Hunter Biden was receiving. Now, why did he receive that money? Yes. I don't I, know. You tell okay, me. Okay. Well, there's a reason why I bring that up. Well, I, he, was, he was a great Ukrainian. I'm trying to, I'm trying to give you an answer. If you can person, listen. I'm trying to give you a little honesty.
safety if you could listen. Obviously, what did he put on his resume that he screwed right, his l- Let me know when I can educate you. After he died? Let me know when I can educate you. Okay, thank you. Give me 20 seconds. Because his father was vice president, he, he was receiving that money. There's no question about it. It's called, and it's the same reason why Ivanka Trump is her business dealings throughout the world are doing so much better now than they were two and a half years ago. Guess That's what, Brady? BS. What's total BS? BS? What's what's Brian. total BS? What's Your total? Hunter Biden was not worth five hundred dollars a month. According to yeah, well, month, come on, man. Well, I don't think wherever job you have, you're worth five dollars an hour. What do you think about that? The number to call is two five seven five three nine six. Again, seven zero two two five seven five three nine six. We'll get to more of your calls on the other side of the break. I'll promise you, I will get to all of them. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. Again, the number to call if you want to be a part of the show. Two five seven five three nine six. Take a quick break. Be back right after this. You're listening to the Vegas Take on the all new one hundred one point five FM seven twenty AM K Don. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take. Sharp and Shapiro. So glad you could join us. Talking about the news of the day from a Vegas perspective. And by the way, coming up in hour number two, it's going to be uh, very interesting. We're going to get into this Dallas cop trial. Guest Ann Bremer, legal analyst, will be joining us. It's a it's a fascinating case and a tragic case both. At the same time, I, I want to, you know, we've been we've been playing some audio, you know, Jake Tapper making Jim Jordan, representative Jim Jordan, look like a complete clown on national television. Same thing with Stephen Miller, this time on Fox News. Chris Wallace making him look like a clown. Well, it doesn't end there because the Republican minority leader, Kevin McCarthy, was on 60 Minutes. 60 Minutes. Millions of people watching. You would think Kevin McCarthy did his homework. Listen to this bit of audio from 60 Minutes. What do you make of this exchange? President Zelensky says we are almost ready to buy more javelins from the United States for defense purposes. And President Trump replies, I would like you to do us a favor, though. Well, you just added another word. No, it's you said, in I'd the like transcript. you to do a favor, though. Yes, it's he, in the, it's in when the I read White the tra- House transcript. There you go. I mean, <laughs> it is in the transcript. That's exactly what he said. He said, I'd like you to do us a favor. Do me a favor. And McCarthy either is completely complicit, maybe he didn't read the transcript, or he just decided to lie on national television and make himself look like a fool that he does on a regular basis anyway. This is Kevin McCarthy, okay? This isn't some, you know, guy in in some city council meeting in a small city, right, in Omaha, Nebraska or something. I don't know. This is Kevin McCarthy, the Republican minority leader, not understanding that the president said the favor question. I mean, it's unbelievable. You got Stephen Miller, Trump's senior political advisor. You have Jake Tapper making Jim Jordan look like a fool. This is bad for the Republican Party. Well, Donald Trump, in my opinion, is bad for the Republican Party, and it's just a matter of time before people turn on him. And I, and I do think Mitch McConnell will. I do think Lindsey Graham will eventually once he takes off the Donald Trump knee pads. And once that happens... That's it for Donald Trump. And now he's going after the whistleblower. We'll get to that in a little bit, but we'll take some more of your phone calls, as I promised I would. That number to call if you want to be a part of this conversation, 257-5396 from Faraway Lands. That area code, 702-257-5396. And let's lead off this segment with Paul. Paul, thanks for calling in. What's going on? Yeah, the last gentleman, you wanted him to respond proof that they're out to get Trump. Well, what did Chucky Schumer say? It said that the CIA... The intel has every which way, four ways to Mm -hmm. get him. Okay. Now, if you're a senator in New York and you make that statement, don't you think this has already become Germany if you got somebody in a government group that the government established, got every which way to get you, just like the IRS? Mm -hmm. Well, let me respond to that, Paul. Let me respond to that. Listen, Listen, there's no question. There's no question, Paul that there are Democrats and there are people out there that are just out to get Trump and they will do whatever it it takes, whatever is possible to get Donald Trump. But with that being said, you still have to understand, and I think you do, that what Donald Trump did here could be extremely serious and very bad, and it could lead to his impeachment. Now, like I said, there's no question. There are Democrats out there that are going to do anything they can to get this guy out of office. But what this guy... The voting is take the vote. They won't take the vote. 
Well, uh, here's what I think, Paul. Here's what I think. I think they will take the vote, but I think more information needs to come out. For example, the whistleblower has to testify. Wherever he got that information from, those people need to testify also. And maybe there's a chance that we need to see more transcripts. You know, I, I think sure. more information needs to come out first, and then I think they should vote. I think that would be the responsible thing to do. But, look, make no mistake about it. I'm not some partisan guy on the radio, and, and all I do is attack Republicans. You're absolutely right. I'm not a Chuck Schumer fan. I'm not a Nancy Pelosi fan. I thought Nancy Pelosi should have announced this impeachment inquiry after the transcript was released. I thought that was wrong. There's no question that there are people on the left that will do whatever it takes, you know, to, to get this guy. No question. So I agree with that, and I, and I appreciate the phone call. Thank you. 257-5396, the number to call. Again, 702-257-5396. Let's go to Carl. Carl, what's going on? Carl, are you there? Go ahead, Carl. Yeah. How you doing, Brian? Good, man. What's on your mind? Good, good. Yeah, listen, uh, you mentioned before about uh, you like to give facts, which I think you do. You're great at that. And uh, well, as you said that, we're going to talk about something else, but it reminded me, many years ago, my father wrote, was a writer. He wrote for Jack Webb, a uh, Dragnet series. And uh, one of Friday's lines was when he talked to, just, I just want the facts, ma'am, just the facts. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think that's what you, you come up with. You try to give facts to people. Well, but people just don't want to hear it. it. You know, I'll tell you yeah. a guy who didn't want to hear it over the weekend. That would be Jim Jordan when he was going yeah. at it with Jake Tapper. You know, this is the amazing thing, and I, and I want everyone to – Carl, you will probably know this. I want everyone to hear this again. This is very, very important. The Republicans want to make the argument that Joe Biden wanted this prosecutor in the UK, Ukraine fired because they were investigating Joe Biden's son. That is completely yeah. factually inaccurate. The prosecutor was not prosecuting the case. In fact, the reason why Joe Biden wanted him fired is for many of the same reasons why many in the Ukraine wanted him fired, because they weren't, he wasn't doing enough to prosecute corruption. No, I mean, it's yeah, so comical. Yeah, he wasn't doing his job, obviously. It's, it's so like, comical. Yeah, it's the opposite. In my, my final point. Uh, what really frightens me about Trump, I, maybe I don't know if I mentioned it before, but you said he was talking about the whistleblower yep. and what they used to do. Do he's a traitor? Well, he should talk. It's like the pot calling the kettle black. But he uh, he says what we used to do to traitors or to uh, blah blah blah. This means execute him. Well, all it does is he, what he's doing is is his uh, subconscious dictatorial policies are coming yeah. out. Yeah, uh, and, and, coming out that he wants to be one. If you notice the way he yeah. he kowtows to Putin or that little uh, absolutely. And by the North way, Korea. and by yeah. the way, if you look up the word corruption, by the way, Carl, yeah. in the dictionary, Donald Trump's face will be right next to it. So if you want, if you really want to get into it and talk about corruption, there you go. Number to call again: two five seven five three nine six. If you want to be a part of the program, thank you for the call, Carl. Let's uh, go to uh, Brian. Brian, you're next on the Vegas Take. Go. You know, we're both entitled to our own opinions, but we're not entitled to our own facts. Okay, well, tell me where you, you think I'm, I'm you not telling the truth. a couple of inconsistencies. Uh, one you just stated with Carl was that, in fact, that the prosecutor was not looking into Joe Biden's son. Not at that time. That, there, there was no ongoing investigation at that time. That's 100% yes, factually there accurate. No, there there was, was, not with the prosecutor. Now, let me finish my statement, please, Well, Brian, your statement's before interrupting Your me. statement's incorrect. There was no. I'm looking at the investigative report by John Solomon, and, and, two-year report, uh -huh. and he spent time in the Ukraine, and here's what it says. There was an investigation into Burisma. That's the company that he worked for. So you're misstating the fact. And that, guess what? That investigation flatlined at that time. It, it, it no, stopped. It yes, it did. At that time. Yes, it did. You That's are not, not factually What's accurate. What's your source on that? What is my Michael source Avenatti. on that? What is your source? Michael Avenatti, excuse me. I'm telling me. you right now, excuse John me. Solomon is my source. Michael Avenatti it's is not my source when it comes to this stuff, okay? I do, I do my own research okay. on that, okay? What's your source, I don't, I don't, I don't have phone calls with Michael Avenatti to get any of my information. And if you I go said that because he brought that up last okay, Wednesday. Okay, so your position, I'll make a bet with you right now. Your position is that they were investigating that company at that time, and your position is also when Joe Biden made that comment about the prosecutor, it was an ongoing investigation, and that prosecutor was investigating his son at that time. Is that your position? No, I did not say that. So what is your position? I'm saying he was investigating Burisma, not Joe Biden's son specifically. And that investigation had stopped at that Biden time. stepped in to have him fired is because that's where it would eventually lead to. 
Okay. That Those investigation. Thing. That investigation had flatlined at that time, and I will make no, you a bet you're, on the air wrong, right now. Brian. Fine, then I'll make you a bet it's on the air. Wrong. Fine, then I'll make you a bet on the air right now. I'll tell you what, if I'm wrong, okay, I will wear a MAGA hat for an entire week on the show. And if you're wrong, you can call up every day and say how smart I am and, and how wrong you are. No, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, uh, and one other quick thing before you. Well, wait a second. Uh, yes or no? Do we have a bet or not? Answer the question. What's, what's the bet about? I just explained it to you. Do I have to no, explain it didn't. again? Yes, I did. At that time, that investigation had gone to a screeching halt. Okay? That is a fact, and I know okay. that for a fact. And I'll either make that bet with you now yeah, or say no. Source for that fact, doesn't matter right? what the source is. Let's get oh, the facts. Now it doesn't matter. Let's get the facts. And yeah. if I'm proven wrong and you could show me 100% evidence, then fine. I, I lose the bet. But the same goes for me, my friend. Same goes for me. Okay, I'll wear a Biden hat. How's that? So you're not going to call in and say how smart I am? What are you afraid of? Why can't you do I, I, that? No, I'll call in and sit. I, I know you're smart. I don't Brian. want you to wear a Biden That's hat. Never, I'm not a Biden okay, fan. I'll do that. I'll, I'll do that. I That's don't, a bet. All right, fine. Okay. I don't, why would I want you to wear a, a, a hat of somebody that I don't support? That doesn't make okay. any sense. Uh, That's fine. I, I'll take that <laughs> bet. And all number right. two is I, I challenge all your listeners to go listen to the full 14-minute interview between Jim Jordan I did. and Mr. Jake Tapper. I listened to the whole thing. Because you're totally mischaracterizing the interview. And how am I mischaracterizing that? Jim I watched Jordan the, look like a fool. I've I, never seen anybody like Jake Tapper. I watched, I like watched the entire interview 20 times, and in that interview, Jim Jordan is talking about how this guy, Joe Biden, went after the prosecutor, never stating and never admitting that that prosecutor at that time was not investigating Joe Biden's son, Jim Jordan also spoke a lot about how, oh, my God, Biden's son was getting $50,000 a month when there was nothing illegal about that. It's called having insiders that can help get you positions, no, and it's, it's the same it's reason. Buying influence and access. And, and, you don't, and you don't think that, and you don't think, and you don't think that Donald Trump's kids are doing the same thing? $3,000 a month. And you, don't think, $3, and you don't think that Trump's kids are doing the exact same thing? No, I don't. Oh, well, you are. That is compl- All right, Brian. That no, is com- I don't. Well, that's completely absurd. That is completely and utterly absurd. If you don't think that Ivanka Trump and Donald Trump's two sons, Uday and Kuse, aren't doing the same thing, that's completely absurd. <laughs> two five seven five three nine six. It, 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 you can't have it both ways here. If you have a problem with it, what what Hunter Biden did, making fifty thousand dollars a month because his father was the vice president, which I believe is a fair statement to make, then you must have a similar issue. With Ivanka Trump and her business throughout the world and both Eric Trump and Don Jr. doing the exact same thing because their father is the president of the United States. And if you don't have a problem with what Trump is doing with his family, but you have a problem with what Biden's son did, then you are partisan and you are biased and you have zero credibility. It is as simple as that. 257-5396 is the number to call. I haven't even gotten into this with the whistleblower yet. Okay, as we know, there are laws put in place to protect people like this whistleblower. But now Donald Trump is going after this guy on social media, in the public eye, saying he wants to meet with this guy face-to-face. And now the whistleblower's lawyers are fearing for his safety. Yeah, I would too. The lawyers for the intelligence official are saying that, uh, you know, Trump has triggered this. A letter signed by the whistleblower's lead attorney is Andrew Bacage and sent to acting director of national intelligence Joseph McGuire pointed to Trump's call for the person who gave the whistleblower information to be publicly identified, which is absurd for the president to do that. And by the way, it is funny that all these Republicans had no problem with these whistleblowers when Barack Obama was president. The letter was dated Saturday and made public Sunday, said events from the past week have, quote, heightened our concerns that our client's identity will be disclosed publicly and that as a result our client will be put in harm's way. <laughs> is this the type of America that you want to live in? 257-5396 is the number to call. Why don't we go to Joe? Joe, thank you for calling into the Vegas Take. What's on your mind? Hey, um, Mr. Shapiro, I, uh, I just want to say, if it wasn't for Carl and Marge, who do you have that ever agrees with you. I don't hear too many people. I don't think you're not that good a talk show host anyway. You don't think I'm not that good a talk show host anyway? Okay, well, that's you're, very you, that's very good proper English, sir. People, 
you call people names and you do. You Joe, you're a great uh, guy. Joe, let me tell you something. You're my favorite caller. You're a, you're a fantastic guy. You sound extremely intelligent. Oh, don't give me that. No, I'm trying to give you compliments. I mean, you're great. You're fantastic. I wish you would call uh, in every day. Let me tell you something, Joe, and I want you to uh, you'll listen be to me. me names no, not going to call your name. No, nope, not going to call your name, Joe. Here, let me tell you something. I would rather have 99 out of 100 people call in and disagree with me like you than have 99 people agree. And if you listen to other nationally syndicated right-wing talk shows, uh, all they do is they perform fellatio on the host on the air. All they do is say how great they are and how much they agree. Listen, let's, uh, that's not well. Listen, that's not a challenge to me. Okay, if I have people call in and agree, that's not a challenge. I would rather have people like you call in and disagree with me. Now, if you want to have a debate on what you disagree with me on, I'll gladly do that with you. But if you're just going to call in and say, all the people that call into your shout disagree with you, you only have a couple people that agree, then I am going to hang up the phone on you. Now, what would you like to talk about? Well, I think... Uh the, the uh, thing on Biden, I, I mean, I, I heard that, I saw the thing on the tape, and I just don't believe. Uh, you know, those Democrats are so, so. I'm waiting for you to make one coherent sentence in one point. Can you please do that? Okay, they, the Democrats are always trying to find things against Trump. Do you think the, the Democrats Democrats are always trying to find things against Trump? So are you saying That's the Democrats right, made up are. that? So did the Democrats make up that transcript, or is it real? They don't have to. Yeah, they make everything up. So, that, so you're, so Joe, your position, that. your position. I just want to make sure I have you clear: is that the Democrats made up this transcript? That it's not a real transcript? Is that your position? They make everything up. They try. They everything make everything. Okay, so, so again, Joe, your position, I don't Joe. It. It, okay, so your position, Joe, is that a transcript that the President of the United States and the White House released? You don't believe. Is that your position? You think the Democrats made up this transcript and they forced Donald Trump to put out a fake transcript. Is that your position, no, Joe? I don't believe that. Well, well, that's what you're saying. You say you don't believe the transcript. So which one is it? You can't have it both ways. Is the transcript real or is it not real fabricated by the Democrats? Which one is it? Well, I just know that that Biden thing, I heard him on TV. So you're not going to answer the question. Well, hey, a conversation between the president, how would anybody know whether – He's saying on the because there's phone. something because there's Joe. I, I can't believe you just made that statement. And I got to hang up in here because it might be the dumbest statement I've ever heard in my life. Every conversation that the president has with a world leader, there are people on both ends that are listening to it. How do you not know that you think when the president picks up the phone and he talks to a world leader, they're the only two people on the phone call. You can't be that dumb with all due respect. Are, and, and then you say that you think Democrats fabricate everything. Gosh, no wonder why there's still people out there that support Donald Trump. There's people like Joe out there that haven't taken his medication this morning. 257-5396. Again, 257-5396 is the number to call. Let's go to Glenn. Glenn, what's going on? Hey, Brian. Long time no speak. What's up, Glenn? How's it going? It's going pretty good. Like I said, Rush went to commercial, so I thought I'd give you a call. Uh, has that guy lost any weight recently, or is he still over 400 pounds? You, you can't. I, I, he said he lost weight, but you can't tell when it's just him and a microphone. Please. I've, heard, I've heard he's a big fan of African-American quarterbacks. That's just a rumor that I've heard. I also hear he likes to pop painkillers, too. That, that's just a rumor. I don't know if that's true or not. Anyway, That's been five, five anyway, six years ago, the painkiller thing. Any, I don't want to talk about that tub of lard. What do you want to talk about today? I want to talk about... With the legal language that's in that whistleblower letter, do you really think some regular person wrote that? With the language that is in that transcript, do I really think that a regular person wrote that? I don't even know what that question means. Yeah, the whistleblower letter. Yeah, I know you're talking about the – what do you mean a regular person? What are you talking about? It's The whistleblower letter is full of legal language. It was written by lawyers. It wasn't written by a, a normal person so in you're, government. Okay, so what's your point? You're saying that the whistleblower is lying because guess what? McGuire, who is a Trump appointee, said that this guy, the whistleblower, is extremely credible, and he has no reason to believe that he's not, and he, he said that everything is legit here. So this is McGuire, a Donald Trump appointee. So what do you have to say to that? I, anyone could be wrong. Anybody could be wrong. That's your explanation. Anybody could be wrong. So that's all you have to say about that. So when you well, call in, so is that is that what your boy Rush says? Anybody could be wrong. Is this is this where you get these right wing talking points from? I don't even think Rush would say something that stupid. No, Rush wouldn't say that. But right, right. Stupid is as stupid does. Right. Yeah, that's who I'm talking to. What is the point? There, Let me ask you this. What is the point of this phone call? I'm still trying to understand. Can you please explain to me what your point was in calling up? 
Because I because I'm I'm at a loss for words. I really I don't know what this point is. What what's the point? What what is the well, point of this you call? You're telling me that I left you lost for words. That's you a are. Compliment. Trust me, it's not a compliment. But I understand with your IQ how you would think that was a compliment. But what is uh, my IQ what is, is quite high. Yeah, it it sounds extremely high. Yes. Uh. So what is the point of this phone call? I'm asking you again for a fifth time. What are you saying? Uh, I'm trying to say that <laughs> if the whistleblower letter was was composed by a group of lawyers. How is it valid to an actually blowing the whistle when we have the transcript from the call where there is no quid pro quo? So you're trying to say that because the whistleblower has attorneys and they helped him form this, this uh, letter word for word so that it sounded proper, you're saying that discredits the whistleblower because he has attorneys? Is that your position? My position is that... The lawyers did it. The whistleblower was is just a made up <laughs> item. Okay, well, uh, Glenn, I can see why you listen to Rush. Have a have a very nice uh, have a very nice day. If we had some conspiracy theory, move you know music, I would probably play that there. Two five seven five three nine six. Let's go to uh, Kevin. Kevin, thanks for calling in, man. What's on your mind? Hey, what's going on? What's up, Kevin? Just I want to know what the favor was on the whistleblower, or on the whole investigation. You stopped short every time. You said that. He asked for a favor. Yes. Want clarification on nothing what the to do favor with is? nothing to do with the whistleblower. Uh, the favor okay, was well, on, the, on, the, on the whole. Uh, sure, sure. I mean, it's in the transcript, but I think it's pretty clear he withheld money. The president of the United States a couple days before that phone call, and in that conversation, he asked for an investigation to be opened into his political opponent, Joe Biden. That's the fa- Joe Biden's son, and Joe Biden. I mean, that's the favor that, that that he's talking about here. It's pretty clear in the transcript. Well, it's just clarification of what happened between his son and Biden, right? I mean... What do you mean clarification? The inv- there was an investigation that was closed. There, the, the, the Ukrainians are saying that there was no legal wrongdoing, according to them. It was a closed investigation, and he's asked... It's pretty clear what the Trump is doing. I mean, it's in the transcript. He's asking for a favor. He withheld the money, the aid, and he's telling them to reopen an investigation and do his political opponent... The, the big political opponent that he's probably going to face in 2020. I mean, I would call that a favor. I understand why he called it a favor. That's what he wants. And then you have Giuliani. I don't even know why Giuliani is doing this, but he's out there with several of Donald Trump's personal attorneys trying to get dirt on Joe Biden, which is beyond inappropriate and illegal, by the way. Well, that's kind of how they all play, right? No, it's not how they all, all play. Politicians try to buy dirt and you make it legal. Find me, f- find me a conversation or a transcript that Barack Obama had asking for a favor for well, dirt Obama on a political media, opponent. More than Trump and any other president. He I'm, didn't talk. He I'm didn't just, come out and he had 12 people to answer to before he even came out with I understand, him. but is it your position that every president and every politician talks to foreign leaders in other countries to try to get dirt on a political opponent? Is that your position? I think he's trying to get to the bottom of Biden holding aid from the Ukraine, not to testify against his son or prosecute his son. Which is illegal to find out, right? We want to know if it happened or not. The you investigation it, was over. Great, but the investigation, just your word. But the in- the investigation was over, Kevin, and I appreciate the call. But the investigation was over with. The Ukrainians found no legal ramifications that Biden and his son did not break the law. I don't understand why that's so difficult for people to comprehend or understand. And make no mistake about it. This story's not going away. It's going to get bigger and bigger. And when we come back, talking about a big story, this Dallas cop trial. Dallas cop walks into an apartment, thought she was in her own apartment, shoots and kills an innocent man. We'll talk about that coming up next. You're listening to The Vegas Take.